Uh, I'm Dr. Aaron Frankie from the University of Florida and University of Florida Health Cancer Center, uh, where I serve as a thoracic oncologist and the co-director of the uh, thoracic disease site group. So, you know, today we discuss some of the key abstracts in the uh, non-metastatic, uh, non-small cell lung cancer setting, mostly looking at early stage resectable and some in the locally advanced stage three setting, uh, and I think. This was probably one of the more exciting years to talk about this space uh, with all the new data that has emerged. Uh, so quickly, we looked at the follow-up from the uh, longest running study in ADEM, then in ADEM 2, where we gave three cycles of neoadjuvant chemotherapy with nivolumab versus chemotherapy alone. Uh, we saw impressive rates of uh, pathological complete response, as well as a bunch of biocorrelative outcomes uh, that showed, again, this is a feasible approach that did not impede surgery and we had a 36% rate versus about a 5 or 6% rate of, of a PATH CR. So while awaiting further survival data, this kind of confirms what we are going to talk about now, which was the Phase 3 study of Checkmate 816. Uh, we saw the first data come out at AACR, again showing about a PATH CR rate of 25 versus uh, two it, with chemo alone, which is pretty consistent with historical data. Uh, we saw the EFS uh, showed a markedly improved EFS, still again a surrogate endpoint coming out to two years. Um, and then we saw a little bit uh, of a deeper dive into the pathologic response data and how it correlates. So showing that even something beyond 60% regression of the tumor uh, had a markedly better outcome when you get to 90 and get closer to a path CR. So I think these kind of findings really support that we will be able to better stratify who needs more intense or more therapy uh, based on the pathologic response. Um, and we await further data to help guide us in the adjuvant setting for those who don't achieve this. Uh, and the last study I just want to quickly mention was a uh, follow-up correlative study. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Dean and his group out at Stanford has continually put out circulating tumor DNA data um, in the locally advanced setting, showing how it uh, strongly correlates with response to immune therapy outcomes and chances of relapse. So this was a follow-up of the Big Ten. Uh, Consolidation Ipinevo, where we got chemo radiation for locally advanced unresectable. Six months of Ipinevo. Uh, the early readout showed there was really no difference between the two groups. A little bit more, but expected toxicity in the Ipi group. But the early readout of survival was actually uh, more than expected based on landmark from Pacific, and it gave uh, treatment for half the time. But the reason this poster was interesting is it again gave us another piece of data showing that circulating tumor DNA presence is a poor prognostic sign, but more so if you cleared it, especially early clearance after the first cycle, you almost had 100% PFS and, and OS going out for follow-up, whereas if you had rising ctDNA, you had a 0% chance of survival or a 0% PFS at a year. So using ctDNA to help us uh, tailor our duration and intensities of therapies uh, is again becoming where I think the field is shifting towards very quickly with more and more supportive data like this.